why, first of all, why the haircut? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. I guess, you know, something just was on my spirit, man. So I need to switch it up a little bit. Um, you know, getting a little older now, so I cut the hair down. Probably going to keep it like this for a while, so y'all going to have to get used to it. I'm getting used to it, too, so. No, nah, man, I, I got a little bit more time for that. I don't know. You know, my, my dad's like that. No, nah, my dad's like that, so uh, it's hereditary, so I'm trying to hold on as long as possible. That's honestly why I was growing my hair out. <laughs> Offseason after you lost to Kansas City in the AFC Championship or, or this one? Um, was tougher. I mean, obviously, being one game away from the Super Bowl was tough. Uh, this offseason was tough as well. Uh, more tough because, you know, just dealing with all the different questions and having to talk about, you know, you guys had nine sacks, you lost the game. Uh, honestly, man, I was just tired of talking about it, you know. You know, it was one of those deals, woulda, coulda, shoulda, uh, just – you know, eyes on the prize, eyes looking forward now, thinking about this year, uh, thinking about the team that we have, uh, thinking about the group and the nucleus of the guys on defense that we still have coming in this year. So I'm super excited, uh, kind of glad to be back in the building, kind of get this thing rolling again. What's the next level that this defense could, can get to? Like, what's the next step for you guys as a unit? Trying to be the top defense in the NFL. You know, that's the goal. Uh, obviously, coming off of 2020, the goal was kind of try to find an, an identity, uh, find out who we are as a team. And I think as the year went along, we started playing better and better and better, and we got dominant towards the end of the year. So I think it's all about taking from that from last year and carry on to this year and try to be the top defense in the NFL. Have you ever been on a team that returned 10 of 11 starters and the coordinator? I don't think so, uh, if I can remember. Uh, I don't remember that. Uh, like I said, I thought it was big for us going into this offseason, especially keeping that front four together. Uh, that was big for me, especially being a safety, wanting to have those guys getting pressure on the quarterbacks, uh, allowing us to do a lot of different things on the back end as far as disguising. And uh, I'm sure Shane and all the coaches have been uh, working hard this offseason, trying to figure out different ways to affect the quarterback, but also disguising and stuff like that, mixing up coverages. By comparison, when you do have to reset, what, what does that take? Uh, to my like, reset in my mind or just? That when you do have the new coordinator, when there is roster turnover. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it, you know, you getting to know, you know, a whole new coach. You know, you had to build trust and communication between the coaching staff and players. Uh, obviously, learning new defense, new terminology. But, you know, obviously when Shane, you know, Shane had been here, the defense hadn't changed that much. But obviously the personnel was a little different. Um, and obviously, talking going back to 2020, the execution just wasn't there. Sometimes the communication was there. You know, we talked about that ad nauseum or whatever. But, um you know, just this year, obviously having uh, the main group of guys is all about taking that next step and um, just continue trying to get better. So how do you guys take that next step? And you know, it starts now. You know, obviously we're just, you know, working out, rehabbing. Some guys are rehabbing. Uh, we're just working on conditioning. But just being in meetings, uh, for me personally, obviously – I'm here trying to continue to learn, develop, and get better as a player. But obviously, being more of a mentor, uh, kind of being in that role a little bit more. Obviously, I've always been, I've always been a leader, but mentoring guys like Caleb, Elijah, uh, continue to helping David Long, you know, elevate his game. And uh, that, that's kind of my mentality, and that's kind of something I've been marinating on the whole offseason, just uh, obviously being a leader, but mentoring some of these young guys who are trying to take that game to the next level. You, you skipped maybe the first couple, not, not these, I don't know if you were at these or not, but the practices. And that the union was putting a lot of word out that they wanted guys to stay away. And there was a COVID element. Right. Has, it, has the union been talking this year in the same way? I mean, I haven't really been in those talks. Um, you know, I think, obviously, around this time of the year, it's a whole big thing, you know, with, you know, the media obviously talking about guys who's showing up, who hasn't shown up. You know, this is all voluntary, you know, and I kind of – try to mind the business that pays me by minding my own business. But I understand that some guys feels like, you know, if they want to show up when we start practicing playing football, then that's what they choose to do. I had already been here uh, working out with Frank and doing different things like that. So I just said, hey, there's no point of me just not showing up just to not show up. Um, so I want to be able to be around the young guys, try to get better and things like that. But, you know, this is a voluntary part of the off season. And for some guys, obviously being on a team like this, uh, where, you know, the system is kind of already set uh, as far as, you know, the culture and things like that. So, you know, if a guy chooses to take a little bit more time off to be with their family, you know, we're not going to hold anything against anybody. What was your strategy? No, sort of, some people uh, say there's no carryover from year to year because everybody starts off zero and zero again. But in your mind, is there carryover and unfinished business from last year? Um, yeah, obviously it's unfinished business because we didn't win the Super Bowl. Um, but 
you know, when you talk about carryover or momentum or whatever, taking on from one year to the next, um, you, I feel like as a player, and it's always been my mentality, that you got to start all the way over. You have to reset your mind. I went first team all pro last year. That's not going to do anything for me this year. I had to continue to work hard, uh, take the same steps that I took last year, being in the meeting room, studying hard, doing all those little things over and over again. And that's how you be consistently uh, great. You talk about guys like, you know, we talk about the guys like Tom Brady and all those guys. Those guys do the small things, the details. You hear young guys in the building saying he's still working like he's a rookie. And I think that's what it takes to try to be great. So, yeah, it's a little bit of carryover because obviously the system hasn't changed, the defense hasn't changed, but we still had to take all those little small steps and all those details that we took when we weren't great in 2020 uh, and try to do the same things this year. What else has kind of gone on in the AFC this offseason? What, what kind of challenges everybody facing in this conference? Yeah, I mean, the AFC is loaded, loaded with a lot of talent, especially quarterback talent. Obviously, watch, you know, receivers change different teams and things like that. So, you know, going to every single year, uh, there's going to be things like that as far as roster turnovers in the league. But, you know, in recent years, I don't really remember it being this much, you know, in that month of March kind of exploded with, you know, Russell Wilson coming to the AFC. So it's going to be huge on us on defense being able to play very well, getting pressure on these quarterbacks, try to make these guys make mistakes. So, you know, I'm already getting the beat on trying to watch as much film on quarterbacks, not only just in my division, um, but just all the teams that we play, you know, starting from the NFC East to the AFC West, I'm studying film. Um, and not necessarily studying for game plan and stuff like that, but I'm just watching the quarterbacks. Like if I just keep watching, keep watching, uh, maybe I can pick up on little things here and there. So when we actually, it's time to play those guys in that week, I maybe can go back into my notes like, hey, Russell Wilson, I got some notes from this and then trying to carry over, you know. Jones, uh, 19 off season, Kevin, when you were up for a contract extension, how did you, you know, did you ever think of, you know, maybe I don't show, maybe that gives me leverage. What was, what was sort of your approach knowing that you were up for an extension? Then? Yeah, I mean, my approach was, you know, I wanted to just show up, you know, and I don't think it's nothing against anybody that doesn't show up because, like I said, this is voluntary. I don't think that, you know, it can go either way. But me personally, um, I felt that I knew I was going to get paid. You know, I just think it's just a process that you have to go to when you talk about negotiations and agents and things like that. I kind of understand when you're looking at, and that's pretty much a lot of different teams around the league, those big money contracts, especially extensions, they tend to happen right before training camp. Um, but, you know, I was already going to be working out anyway, so I wanted to come in here and continue to learn and continue to try to get better as a young player. Uh, so that's, that's just what I did. But at the end of the day, like I said, I kind of just mind the business that pays me, you know. Some players who, who, you know, maybe go to, to social media as they're you know, kind of talking about the new contract extension right. too. Do you think, in your opinion, does that help? Does it not help uh, in, in those cases? I mean, I don't know if it does or not, you know. Like I said, if somebody wanted to get on social media to talk about what they want to talk about, then that's on them. Uh, I don't think, honestly, I don't think it does any, any bad. I don't think it does any good. I think it's just all about what a personal decision and what they want to talk about. You know, it's a, you know, it's a free country, free speech. So, um, like I said, just me personally, um, you know, I don't do too much talking and stuff like that on social media unless, like I said, I'm posting on Instagram or whatever. But like I said, man, I think these things, they all work, this, they all work themselves out. And uh, obviously, if you're, you're talking about A.J., A.J. Uh, is one of the best receivers in the league. And obviously, you know, Vrabel and, and John, they've talking about him being here. So I have no concerns about A.J. not coming in, being in shape, coming in here ready to produce and being the same type of guy he's always been. Kevin, this run of success, six or seven years, you guys have got different slogans, good to great, unfinished business, things like that. As you come back right now as a leader, is, is there a slogan you guys have or a message you give to your teammates? Um, I wouldn't say it's a necessary slogan. Obviously, uh, this has been the first day. Vrabel hasn't been here today. Uh, he's has, he has a deal that he's dealing with as far as – so next – Tomorrow we'll have a team meet, and I'm pretty sure he'll have a slogan that we'll kind of carry on to this offseason. But just being poised and, and just trying to – I'm just getting better. I mean, that's kind of what I just preach to everybody, getting better. You know, you're either, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You never stay the same. So just as a team, we're just trying to get better. You've seen this place completely transform around right. you. Any excitement or desire to try to make it to a new stadium in 2026? 22, that's a long time from now. Like, honestly, just me being a player, man, that's so far out. Obviously, it would be super exciting for the city of Nashville to get a new stadium. Obviously, a lot of stuff comes with that, with the Super Bowl bids and things like that. But 2026, man, I only think I'm under contract in 2026. So once that time gets there, then I'll be trying to get excited about playing a new stadium. What would you like to see in that stadium if you made it? Uh, grass. <laughs> but we all know if it's a dome, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Long earlier, how different are things going to be for him all of a sudden being one of the older guys in that room? You think? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I'm one of the older guys in, in the whole 
locker room now. And it's, it's funny how I've been a rookie and now I'm, I think I'm the second oldest guy in the DB room now. It's pretty crazy. But obviously talking about David Long, uh, David Long plays with a lot of confidence, plays with a lot of passion. Um, so I'm just excited to see his progression as a player. Obviously, you still have Cunningham in the room. You have a young guy in Monty Rice who's going to take his next step as well. But I think just the passion that he plays with and just the type of confidence that he has, he's already a leader, you know what I'm saying, just in his own right. And I, I'm just excited to see him this offseason just continue to take that next step. He had the season for, for Caleb, Kevin, uh, given you know how little he, he played last year and, and really in college. Too. Yeah, it's super important. I mean, I know by coming in, working out and stuff like that throughout this offseason, he's been here every day. Uh, so he's been here working. He's been studying with Midge and the coaches and things like that. So I'm obviously going to be excited when he's able to clear and be able to get out on the field and kind of get those reps in because that's the main thing when you're talking about a guy who's had some injury issues the past couple of years. It's just those valuable reps that you miss, whether right, it's in practice or in the game. So. Uh, the more he gets more reps, the more comfortable he'll get, the more his confidence will continue to build. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm excited for him. When Ben Jones was talking about the AFC loading up, he said, well, you guys have been building a program steadily for years. When you have that foundation, that cultural foundation, how helpful is that no matter who's coming in and out to be able to rely on that? Yeah, I mean, I think you, you, you see it. I mean, it's probably more prevalent in basketball, but in football, you, you, can't, really, you can't really buy championships like that. Uh, you have to have the foundation first, then you bring peace into that foundation, and then that's when you talk about winning championships. So we have the foundation, and obviously last year we brought some pieces together. We wasn't able to put it together, but that culture uh, and the piece, you know, as far as the things that Vrabel has instilled in us as the team and obviously having a lot of core leaders on his team, uh, that's what carries over. If you want to talk about things that carry, that's what carry over from year to year, just that culture that we build. And it's up to us as leaders and the veterans to continue to, to harp that onto the younger guys and some new guys that's coming on the team this year. So, like I said, I'm excited and um, excited to get this thing rolling, man. Of last season, you, you mentioned how important it was to bring back Harold. Now that you guys have him re-signed, just how – how, how excited are you and just, you know, the, that de the defense's ability to take that next step just because you have him back? Yeah, man, I talked about last year, man. I feel like we have the best front four in the league, and uh, I was super adamant about bringing Harold back um, because, like I said, me being a safety, man, having those front four guys uh, wrecking havoc in those backfields, whether if it's in the run game or obviously getting after the quarterback, you know, it makes my job a lot easier. Uh, so happy to have all those guys back. and. Looking forward to those guys, you know, trying to – I know they have some big lofty goals as well, probably trying to lead the league in sacks and all that different stuff. So, uh, super excited about working with those guys again. Kevin, one more, quick, have, Kevin, have, one more quickly. Uh, can you speak about your, uh, your charity event on Thursday you got coming up? Yeah, so Thursday uh, I'm actually – uh, uh, honorary coach here uh, for the Rally Foundation. And this Thursday is going to be Rally on the Runway uh, where I think it's going to be 12 – 10 to 12 kids that are either dealing with cancer right now or have beaten cancer. And it's called rallying the one way because I'm going to get me, a lot of my buddies on the team, we'll be walking the kids down the runway. You know, they'll strut their stuff and stuff like that. So, I mean, honestly, man, it's a life-changing event. Uh, the first time me going was my rookie year and Jarrell Casey was the honorary chair and he passed it along to me. And just hearing the stories and just seeing the parents and obviously being a parent myself now, um, I think so. The, one of the worst moments uh, in a parent's life is, you know, getting that news from a doctor saying that your child has cancer and, and watching your child go through chemo and all that stuff is definitely life changing. So for me personally, it's something that me and my wife, obviously we do a lot of things in the community, but I've been working with the Rally Foundation since my rookie year. And like I said, it's definitely life changing. It's going to be good to, you know, get some of my, my buddies out obviously there and some of the young guys to be able to see uh, what, it, what, it, what, it, what it means to give back into the community, what it means to, to like I said, to have those life changing moments. And honestly, man, just giving your time, man, just talking to these kids, uh, it can mean it can mean everything to them, you know. So uh, it's going to be super science. So like I said, this is Thursday. It's going to be a marathon. Music works. No problem. Absolutely.